David. Can you just talk about what your approach will be with breath this week, and do you focus more on just the, the mechanics or the mental? I mean, it's, it's both, I assume. But, yeah. I mean, do you emphasize one over the other or just the approach? The I, I don't think so. I think I talked to Britt this morning. He came in. We had a great conversation about yesterday, you know, because – I think the biggest thing for us is not to, not to pretend like it didn't happen and just kind of move on. So uh, we addressed it from a, you know, kind of what happened perspective and mentally and physically. And so then we talked about our, about our plan this week. So we'll go through with the normal plan. You know, he kicks on Thursdays and Fridays of a normal game week. And we're going to treat this as a normal game week, even though we're a day short. So, um, you know, he was, he was distraught. Like I am, I share in all the players' agony. <laughs> so... Um, like he should be, he's a competitor. You know, he knows that just a bad day at the office and um, I have full confidence he'll rebound. So, f yes, I mean, it's, it's part psychological for sure, you know, and I don't think there's anything physical. You know, the first two, if you asked him, he, he kind of, he didn't, he was a little bit lazy on the finish on the first one and then kind of towed the second one. He then said, damn, and then he kind of just overcorrected on the third one and then you know, the fourth one is just kind of part of the, the mental process of it. But Nothing mechanics as far as the operation. It was just nope. one of those days. One of those days. Good snap, good hold, feel was fine, no wind. Just one of those days. Wish I could give you some more information on the why, but that's just one of those days. Uh, Todd Archer with ESPN. When a kicker pushes it to the right, is there a general, like, the plant foot's too far ahead of the ball or anything that you look at when you – yeah, yeah, for sure. The first one is just, he just said, I just didn't commit to my full swing, almost like it was like a lazy swing. And then the second one, he just caught it out on the toe, more than like the sweet spot. Like if you're a batter, you know, you can tell it, the tingling in your hands when it's like, I didn't get it compared to like the, the good ball in the wood. So um, those are the first two. And then there are some, some interesting situations that came, apart with, came about with some of the ones, the second PAT. Um, some came out last week, I'll just be straight up, that you know, holders are using foreign objects to, to place footballs and all that. And so all of a sudden this became a big deal that I found out about during the game. Most holders will use, if it's not spotted on the hash, they'll grab a piece of white grass from a, from a painted line just to mark the spot of the hold so they can sight the spot back when they put it down. And um, right before the second one, it got swept away by an official that said, you know, we can't do that. And um, that's the first time that's been emphasized to me in my whole career and so I guess that became a thing that um, they're looking for foreign objects that are being spotted by holders which in my experience there's no foreign objects ever spotted and um, I'll just look at the rule book on that because I don't think grass is a foreign object but maybe maybe there's something to that that was before the second kick and then after this after the second miss we lost both our top two K balls and so there's a big discussion on the sideline that we're down to our third and last K ball, which hadn't been doctored up necessarily because you only have a certain amount of time to do your three K balls. And so you spend the most time on the first one, whatever's left over on the second one, and hope to get a couple of scrubs in the third one. And um, the first two got lost in the stands, so we're on our third K ball. And if we would have lost that one, we'd have had to use a Buccaneers K ball. So that was a, a first discussion for me on the sideline about, you know, losing K balls and potentially having to use theirs. So a lot of stuff, you know, just kind of a perfect storm of a, a bad kicking day. Mike. You, oh Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News. That's a lot going on. And I know you talked before about kind of keeping Brett's mind just clear. Is it, do you try not to have him think about or even know about the blade of grass or about the cables, or is that just unavoidable and it's, it's, it's going to creep into his, his thought process? Yeah, that, one, that was unavoidable because the sweeping away of the blade of grass happened right in front of him, you know, before we were about to kick it. And then the cable one, I included him in the discussion. Because the discussion was if we lose this third one, you know, which one of the Buccaneers balls would he prefer to use? And so we were, we were dealing with that too. And it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a big deal. I mean, he is a very strong mentally man. Um, so it's not really that much to deal with. But, you know, things are happening. It's a big game. You've already missed one. Now you've missed two. It's like, damn. You know, it's compounded a little bit. And so um, – to be honest with you, as a coach, I kind of live for these moments to play more, you know, psychologist than coach and to get back in the meeting room and find a way for these guys to bounce back because we all go through it. And I've been through it too, you know, bad games, bad days, bad calls, bad weeks. 
it lingers, man. You know, it, it, and usually it doesn't go away until the next game. And you hope the next game you have a, a decent game so that can go away. But, um, you know, we all, we all share the same kind of agonies on bad days or bad calls. And so um, this will be a really cool week. And I would, I would expect football karma to kick in and have him have a great day. Got my hopes. Snyder Dixon with the AP. The foreign object thing, had that, was that out of the blue? Had it been something discussed in recent weeks about officials and stuff? Or where did that come from? I hadn't seen any memo or discussion or anything about it until I didn't even know about it until our holder anger came up and told me after the second kick what had happened. So I went up to the the officials who are the, the sideline officials that are not part of the crew and just asked them, you know, where did this come from? And then it became something where it was supposedly emphasized all season and it always has been. And I said, well, it hasn't been even brought up once to me my whole career, not only this year. So um, I'm sure, you know, I didn't want to bring that up. And it's not an excuse by any means. It's just, it was just, it was very unique for me to have that happen, knowing what had been kind of came out last week or the week before about, you know, I saw some videos of a holder picking up something and people said it's a coin or people said it's a, I don't even know what else it could be. That's just not true. But blades of grass have been used. I know that. Mike. Um, just direct, straightforward question to remove any uncertainty. Will, will Brett be your kicker Sunday in Santa Clara? Hell yeah. If you ask me. <laughs> Absolutely. Scott, did you have any? No. Yeah, Back. Kevin Gray, 105 through the fan. Coach, did you see anything in warm ups from Brett that you know was off or anything as he was preparing for last night that maybe gave you some indication of what possibly could happen or anything that you saw? Nope, none. We had a great week. Um, last week we did our Thursday, Friday routine, which I told Brett this morning because, you know, then you start questioning my routine, my process. I said, Brett, and I'll say this, and I'm not saying this because you're right here and we kind of need to hear this, but I think he has the best process of any kicker I've been around. He's very you know, distinct what he needs to do on Thursday, how many kicks, the distance, the hashes, what he's going to do on Friday to kind of warm himself up situationally. I think it's outstanding. I said, don't go there with that because that is right. So um, there wasn't anything during the week or even pregame that led you to believe anything was amiss. You know, it was just like, okay, this is gonna be, it's gonna be another good day for us. Brad. Uh, Bones, Brad, Sham, Cowboys Radio. Uh, factoring in whether it belongs there or not, the last the kick in Washington. Also, uh, do you believe in the yips? I do. Yeah, I, I do. I, I believe in. I believe in a hot hand, and I believe in the yips, absolutely, and. Um, you know, you, you wonder sometimes how you get into the yips, and you wonder sometimes how you get, get back into the hot hand. And I think it's keep, you know, stepping up to the line and shooting that thing. <laughs> you know, we missed a couple of free throws yesterday. So I, it's, it's a great question, Brad. I'm glad you asked it. You know, whether it's, I don't know what it is, but I believe in the yips and I believe in the hot hand. You know, and he had a hot hand. You know, let's face it. You, only missed four kicks all season, a PAT, a 49-yarder, and two 57-yarders. And then, you know, the yips happened. So, so I'd expect, you know, a hot hand coming up. And, and then Levi Stadium, in my experience, there is not an easy place to kick. You know, there's grass. There's probably some conditions. and um, There's definitely win factor. So let's go. What else do we want? Uh, bonus follow-up. Have, have you ever had a good kicker who had the yips before? And how did you handle that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, uh, I could go back every kicker, you know, start with Janikowski. There was an Arizona game that has always stuck in my head in 2009. He missed a PAT early in the game, missed a field goal later in the game, missed a 34-yarder game winner. And, you know, he was back on the field the next morning like he always was. And the best medicine for him was to just kind of kick, swing a little bit. And he ended up having a great season. Um, you know, been through a lot of the yips with Zerline over the years. A lot of hot hand with Zerline and a lot of yips over the years. Um, my first experience with Brett, I think this is the first yip, you could say. You know, he missed a 57-yarder. Should have made the 49-yarder on Thanksgiving Day. You know, just kind of got lazy with Washington. And then, oh, you know, then the yips happened. So um, 
I'm very excited to see how we all pull out of it. And I say we because I'm a, I said I'm a part of it. So I share in his ecstasy. I share in his agony. I'm sharing all of that. So I wasn't going to get any sleep last night anyway. So uh, it's all good. Yeah. Garrett Silver, we'll start Telegram. Did the problem with extra points affect his kickoff? Because it looked like his kickoffs were short in the second half. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Um, Probably, probably, yeah. Um, that's why earlier in the season we kind of talked about instead of asking him to go directional left, directional right, put it in place short. Sometimes it's just hey, let him if he if he's hot, just let him keep hitting kickoff. Let him just keep hitting kickoffs. And um, I think the two do go hand in hand. You know, whether it's confidence, whether it's you know now you're starting to think and I don't want to pull a kickoff out of bounds. So there's probably a lot of the, the mental part of it too. And. Um, it was good to cover some kickoffs, but I think I think it did have a factor. It's a good point, good observation. Yeah, Claire, Irving Calvin, Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Um, you don't have a lot of K balls, so when you lose them, is there a process in terms of someone's got to go get those, or what's the procedure? Yeah, no, it's that's a good one. They they ended up in the stands, and we just we couldn't get them back. And I don't know necessarily who's exactly responsible for getting them back. I just know that we've always gotten them back. It's the first time I experienced losing even one K ball. You know, sometimes um, I can't remember losing a K ball, but we lost two and we were down to the third one, which isn't, which is basically an out of the box ball, which is also factored in for, for Brian Anger. You know, his punts weren't the best because he was kicking K ball three, which I don't want you guys to think I'm up here saying, like, you know, that's the reason why, but, but the ball is a factor, you know. Sure. John Jory of Sign Yahoo Sports. Dak was caught on the broadcast um, showing emotion about wanting to go for two on the third extra point attempt. Um, is that something that you and Brett have a conversation about? I know he said he, Dak said he talked to Brett about it after. And were you involved with any conversations during the game about let's just go for two this is instead? No, I, you know, I, I heard about that, but I, I didn't see any of it. I didn't have a conversation with Brett about it. I think um, without knowing too much about it, I think it's just part of the emotions of the game, you know, where yeah, let's go for two if you miss a couple of them. Um, but you know, we the field goal. We were in field goal range later in the game, but we ended up going for it on fourth down. And I think just that was business as usual, not a result of we don't want him to kick, you know, a 41 yard or whatever it might have been. Um, so, sorry, I lost my train of thought on. You would recommend that, or you consider that? Because I know you have so much confidence in your guys, but also you want to make sure in a closer game that yeah. it's not becoming a factor. I don't think that crept in. Um, I think we got to about the 36-yard line later in the game, and we're kind of on the verge of field goal range. And maybe if it's you know it's a 55-yarder, maybe maybe you punt it and kind of just hey you know try to get out of there without you know compounding a bad day. Um, but I'd love for him to step back up and, you know, give him another shot to see one go through, which hopefully will lead into some confidence this Sunday. Because we'll need it. Nicky, MendelsCowboys.com. Uh, along those lines, you're a pretty optimistic guy. Everyone talks about the first four, but does the fifth one that he made, does that give you some confidence, give him some confidence that, you know, you're only as good as your last kick? Type yeah. Thing? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it is. You're as good as your last kick. But... I don't think probably just one PAT make is going to give him confidence. You know, it's good to see it go through, but you like to, you know, maybe make a 48 yarder, you know, into some wind to give you some confidence. A PAT, you know, we should make him. So I don't, hopefully it's not, you know, making one PAT after five misses in a row gives him confidence. But um, I think that this week will give him some confidence just getting back out there. And he's probably going to be um, mentally hurting pretty bad until he can kind of sweat and kick again. There's no medicine like being back on the practice field. I know that. So um, I am optimistic, you know, in a, in a good professional man who really gives a damn, you know, it leads me to be optimistic about, you know, a good rebound. We all want it. I mean, that's, <laughs> we all want it. Christy Scales, Cowboys Radio. Are the conversations that were taking place on the sideline last night between you and the specialists and and it was an alternate official who was handling the K balls on the sideline. But that's because you have alternate officials for the playoffs, yep, which you yep. don't normally have for regular season games or preseason games. So, do you know what the protocol is if there's not one of these guys that you can talk to and refer to? Yeah, regarding the K balls, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Just having that official because 
it was it's different. It, it's, right. We don't normally yeah. have that. Yeah, if we didn't have that, it might have been just the the K ball K ball man that would run. You know. So I don't know. I don't honestly. It's a great question. And now that I know that you know, there's a strong possibility of potentially losing one or two or three K balls. I should do a better job of knowing who the go-to person is if it's if it's not a um, a playoff game, I guess, where there's not those guys on the sideline that came up to me and told me. I didn't even know we had lost both of them until he came up and said, "Hey, we just lost our second. I'm like, "Oh, damn!" You know, then he handed me the third. I'm like, "Oh, jeez!" You know, this this ball is just got out of the box. So, um, yeah, that because of this, you know, I learned too. And you know, everything, every game seems like something happens new. It's like, man, okay, well, we got to figure this answer out too. So. I'll investigate that. Thanks. If this question's too scheme, I'll understand not wanting to go into it. What, as a in punt return game, what do you gain when CJ and Kelvin are inside as opposed to their traditional alignment as, as jammers? Um, that was that was kind of something we did where we wanted to see what would happen if we did that. Not to get too much into the scheme. That's not the world that they necessarily belong in, but there are some things that we just wanted to, we just wanted to see what would have happened. And so we kind of saw, and I, I could have gone back to it, but I felt like I wanted to get the ball in Terp's hands with our, with our normal process and um, see what would happen. So it was just a, it was a game plan type thing, just to see what would have happened and what could have come off that. We had, we had some ammunition, but I kind of, I, I got back away from that just to try to get Terp the ball in his hands in a normal punt return call. And then with Brett, again, sorry. Um, yeah, it's all good. He's, as you mentioned, a veteran, and he's got this imagery-driven process that he does every week. How helpful is that when you've got, when you're going through this process now with a veteran who's got a bit of a backbone in terms of the team that's established relative to a younger player? Yeah. Um, one more time, Michael, just... just the importance of it being a, an experienced kicker who's yeah. going through this right now, who's got an established routine yeah. throughout the week rather than maybe a younger one who's, you know, more figuring it out. Yeah, I think from Brett's perspective, there's not going to be any experimentation with a new routine because we talked about that. Let's put that to the side because that's, that's not the reason why he's got a great routine. Where maybe a younger guy says, well, you know, maybe what I did last week didn't work, so I should try something new. And I think when you get into the experimentation of process and routine, that could be a little bit dangerous too, I think. So for me and for Brett, it's, you know, business as usual. He's got a great routine. We'll stay with our normal schedule. Um, he does a great job of situationally kicking and distance and hash kicking. And there's no change to that that I see necessary at all because I think it's outstanding. So we'll stay with the plan. All right, thank you, Bob. All right, thank you guys.